Hey everybody, it's Bruce Nature Calls. Today I'm out doing my test setups or my learning how to do a setup of the new Big Angus Tiger Wall UL2 tent. It's uh, one of the lightest out there, especially for a two door, two vestibule um, ultralight tent. It's two pounds, eight ounces. Um, and they've decided they could have gone lighter, uh, like say like the Nemo, but they've made some really choice decisions as far as convenience and headroom that I think is actually worth the extra three ounces or four ounces. Um, so let's take a look at how this is all set up, but just, you know, right off the top, we have um, the fabric is like a 15 denier uh, sill nylon that, they, that they're that they making their waterproofing out of. So that's super light. Um, they do have a footprint that comes with it. So you, know, you do have to be careful with these tents. But these tents um, with all these bigger name manufacturers have been surviving, you know, the 2,600 mile PCT. And, and so when it, uh, tents put up and taken down every night for months. And so if they were having a problem with that, with these fabrics, they, they would have to do something else, but they're really not. So um, you do need to take care of it. Um, I wouldn't put it up against some, you know, the gale force winds. Uh, definitely, you know, site selection, those kind of things are a big part of this, but, but they're really great tents and Big Agnes is a, is a super company. So let's look at how we set this all up and uh, all the cool features. Okay, we're just going to get started by laying out the, the tent body. I've got a little bit of a breeze and it's coming from my back and this is the foot end of the tent. So I would have the foot end into the wind and that's something, this, since this is a semi freestanding as opposed to a freestanding, a freestanding tent, you can set all the poles up and you can move it around wherever you want. Um, you can kind of do that with this one, but still these two foot end corners have to be staked out. So. Um, it's not quite as easy. I've gone ahead and staked out the center tie out um, Just so it won't blow away with the wind now the the stakes that they give you are these nice DAC J stakes They're they're really nice. They're super lightweight. I've used these many times before. I think they're very strong um, If you just look at the profile they, they they've built a really strong um, Good all-around stake with this. This is really where that the ultralight uh, tents have come up with these. Well, they haven't come up with it. The hub system's been around for a long time, but they use a hub instead of multiple single poles. They figure out a way, geometric, the geometry to come up with uh, a hub system all in one. And they're using the, the, the DAC Featherlight NFL green. I think they're 8.7 millimeters. So these are the top of the line tent poles. Um, you just want to make sure that everything is fully seated, that the full ferrules are fully seated. Um, you want to look at these after each trip maybe and make sure there's no cracks or anything like that in them. Um, they do give you a little repair sleeve that you can use, but this is where a lot of the damage would come from is uh, the pole set and having them break and then going through your tent. Um, here you can see they have a crossover pole, that's going to really come in key later. Um, let's go ahead and set this in. Now they have color coded it on the head end. You have this gold uh, anodized piece right here and you have this goldish yellowish uh, webbing with the grommet. And so those colors match up and at the foot end they have uh, just silver. So. We just put that into the grommet and then we do that on the other side. Now we just put on these quick release clips that most tent manufacturers have. Nowadays, they're really easy to put on and really easy to take off. This is where you start getting the rigidity to these ultralight tents though. The tension of the fabric the tension of the pole system. Now this is the crossover pole right here and they don't specify in the directions but every other tent that I've had that had this crossover pole system is to have the pole over the top of this main body pole. 
and it might not make a difference, but they don't really specify it. Now, I'll show you this a little closer. We just clip that on. Now for this crossover pole, you have this little plastic piece. And you just clip that from the bottom up onto the grommet. To take it off, you flip it up. So let me see if I can do that better vision. So you come up from the bottom, snap. And to get rid of it, you flip it to the top and it comes undone. Now this is where it really comes in specific with your staking out. So this is a foot end. You've got this nice lightweight cordage on here. Love that. And to line up your tension, foot tension, side tension, so you get a nice tension to hold that tent out. And you put your stake in all the way down so it's almost, almost buried. That's where you're gonna get your strongest. So now we have the tent and it's in its nice rigid form. Okay, so here we have the tent. It's all set up. So this would be your normal summer mode. Um, and how they're getting away with so light, like the bathtub floor down here and the rain fly I'll show you later is a 15 denier fabric that's a sill nylon. And so that's, a, that's actually a very light fabric. You're getting into like sleeping bag fabric level. Um, but Big Agnes and REI and MSR and Nemo, they're all going... They're all finding this fabric or they're making this fabric and the fabric's obviously strong enough to be able to handle the type of abuse that people are putting for like through hikes. Um, so that's where, you know, you look at some of these cheaper tents and I just know for a fact they're not able to get this higher quality fabric. Um, but that is very, very thin fabric. And so you do have to take care of it. What's nice about the tiger wall that I like is that they brought up this fabric up on the side instead of having all bug net and really that the difference in weight between bug net and this fabric here which I think is probably like a even less than 15 denier um, is really fairly nominal but here you get a little bit more privacy and I've always liked a tent that has a little more solid wall up so like say you are in your other people and you wake up there nobody's just looking in on you so that's real nice another thing they've done here where they may have they could have scrimped on weight is to have one zipper D door and they decided to have two. So this bottom zipper goes that way, this zipper goes that way. Um, I, I, I like the benefit of that. Many times when we're out camping and we want to get something out of our tent, we don't want, you know, the zipper might be in some weird spot and we just want to reach in and grab a, a wool hat or something like that. And this allows you to just open up a little bit uh, starting at this corner, so I think that's really nice. Here we have all this bug net still, so it's uh, it's really kind of a fun color. Let's go ahead and roll this on back. The zippers and everything, of course, are lightweight. They're not like the heavy-duty zippers. You don't expect heavy-duty with these ultralight tents. It has a nice tie back system. So there we go. Super nice. So here you can see I'm six feet and my head's not touching. And with the, the tiger wall, they put this crossbar on here back further. So there's actually a lot of headroom all the way to the middle of the tent. So they really made something that's pretty livable. You know, if you had to live in this tent, during a big rain or something like that. This actually has a lot of room on the inside as far as sitting up. When it comes to lightweight though, the interior is pretty narrow. Now the interior is only like 53 inches across at the head end. And I'm a six foot, six foot guy. And wide shoulders. So if there was like two of us that were six feet tall, wide shoulders we'd be touching shoulders pretty well um, but you know, it's me and, and a smaller person you know this this would actually be, be just enough room so you could put your 25 inch tapered mats in um, now what's also nice when you get into these ultralight tents is what what else do you get with it they put a real nice pocket up here you can put lots of things they've got a couple of pockets 
on the side. And when you're in the lightweight mode, you don't have a lot of things. You don't have uh, a need to have put things in a lot of places. Um, I'll show you in a bit the, the vestibules, and they're actually pretty big. They're like the biggest for this class. But when you do this lightweight backpacking, you have a sleeping pad. That would be in here. Your sleeping bag, that would be in here. Um, you only have enough clothes, really, for your, for your trip. Um, your shoes might be outside. Um, your first aid kit would be maybe you know, in a pocket or in your backpack. Your backpack should almost be empty, other than food, which you'd be hanging. Um, you could also put your, your, um, your lightweight cook set in that bear bag. And so you really don't have a lot that needs to go in these tents. So when you're doing the, the lightweight thing, this is actually plenty of room. Um, like the Copper Spur, which is a, another awesome tent by Big Agnes, it does give you that little bit more room. So if you have more clothing, um, it gives you a little bit more room and it's freestanding, but it is still this two door, two vestibule tent, which I just love. Uh, the single door, like up in the front, it is fine. You're gonna lose a lot of weight just having the one door, but there's nothing like if you have two people to have each person have their own door. But this is actually pretty darn nice. Now let's put on the rain fly and of course the winds changed on me you still have these color-coded webbing straps to help you make sure that everything's going to line up and they just clip on in very simply now before you tack it all down you want to make sure that your rain fly is also benefiting from the center pole and there's this little cup that you just basically put over the top of that center pole. So it's just a, just a little cup. And this rain fly again is at 15 denier, so it is lightweight, but you know, you've got the, the you know, they, they're investing a lot of money in this. Well, if you, if you really need to, you have a big wind coming up. They have these little Velcros that you can Velcro onto your pole system. We'll tighten down our straps. Now for this end, we can just use the same stakes. That gives a nice tension. It's nice that they've also provided guy lines out of all their guy, light, guy out points. And this is, I think, a big problem that people don't guy out their tent properly for those big storms. And when it comes to ventilation, this becomes very critical. Now they do have guy outs out here, so you're definitely gonna get you know, you got some good guy out points and if you fasten the poles with the velcro but this one guy out point here is so important i can't express how important it is um, but it's mainly for ventilation so you really need to have that pulled out in a way so you get that air flow going up into your tent to bring that condensation out and then have everything else staked out so you have that nice air flow but this one you know, I know a lot of people that have these little tents and they never guide out the bottom. And it's so important when it comes to condensation. But there again, I would add probably three more lightweight stakes to this kit at minimum. They just don't have enough. And then we want to make sure we get a nice tension all okay across. There we have the vestibules. So you have this nice rain flap that covers up your zipper. Let's open it up. Go ahead and open this up. Before I tie it back, I wanna show one really cool aspect that they did for this when it comes to ventilation. So you have to zip down and say you need more ventilation, you can actually unzip it from the top. So you can get a little bit more air, especially up the top where that condensation is. I think that's a really smart idea. 
go ahead and tie this on back. So here you have the vestibule. Um, it's, it's the biggest for its class. If you're doing this kind of backpacking, you're not using like a 65 liter pack, you're using like a 38, maybe a 50 liter at most. So, and it's going to be pretty much empty when you're in your tent. And what else do you have? I mean, if you have your sleeping bag and your mat and your extra clothing, which is usually only a couple pieces, um, your food bag and first aid kit, and your little cook kit. So you don't need a ton of room, so this would be great for your shoes. And a lot of people use just torso length sleeping pads. I don't, um, but you could have your sleeping bag, your, your backpack even in here with you too. So, so that the vestibule size isn't mission critical, but it is nice, you know, if you were cooking, you could use your trekking pole and make a, like an awning out of both of these. You could do all kinds of things uh, for when it's those super rainy days, but this is plenty, plenty of room. Now here we have both doors rolled back, so you still have a nice real open type tent. Um, if you think it may rain or may not rain, you have it all set up. You're still getting great ventilation and great views. Um, you know, if you had to, you could get this set up from this point pretty quickly. Now for the semi freestanding, this is what you have to deal with is this, is this triangular pull out of the, of the foot end corner down here. So this is what makes it not freestanding, but you still get the, the nice, you know, mainly freestanding. But this is, this is the critical point of having that difference between uh, freestanding, non-freestanding, um, or like a stakeout type, tunnel tent type of scenario. So you've got to have this stakeout to make the tent what it is. Okay, so that's the regular normal way to set it up. So let's do the fast fly where we take the weight down to one pound, 11 ounces, and which is great for non-buggy times of the season where we just use the footprint and the rain fly. Okay, for the fast fly, you have to have the footprint, of course, which is six ounces, I'm pretty sure. Um, that's the first thing you set up. And you'll see that it has like a seam tape and all that. You want that facing up and that becomes pretty apparent when you look at how you clip in your rain fly. So you have to have these little channels up. Actually, we're going to go with the foot end. Yeah, so the first thing you want to do is stake out your basically five stake points. I'm not going to stake it out like crazy because uh, I'm just doing practice. Say this was windy, this is kind of how we would do it. So stake out these first. Stake out this middle one. They got the head end. Make whatever adjustments you need to make. Okay, so there we have it. We take the pole assembly. Do that just as we did the, the tent before. There we're all set for the rain fly. You'll pull over. At this point, we just put the pole ends into these little pockets by themselves. And clip the front down. Okay. 
tighten her up a little bit. Clip on our little corners. Do our vestibules. Make sure they're all zipped up when you do this. There we have the flash, the flash or fast fly setup mode. Pretty nice. So that's 11 pounds, or one pound, 11 ounces. Uh, it's got plenty of room. We way more room than you'd ever need for say two people. So you have the fast fly, so you got got plenty of room for two people in here. I mean, you've got ample ample room. Um, this is where, you know, when you're bored at night, I sit there and put the Velcro on those poles. Uh, definitely still got places to hang things. But real nice option, super, super light. At one pound, 11 ounces. You know, this, I think, rivals anything out there as far as going for the super ultra light. So, very, very nice. All right, so there you have it, the big Agnes Tiger UL2. They do make a UL3. Um, definitely is a one person, the UL2 UL is fantastic size tent. Um, personally, I'd probably do the UL3, which is only a few ounces more. Uh, but for gram for gram, especially in this mode, you're really talking about a super ultralight, very easy to set up. You don't need trekking poles and you're at that one pound 11 ounces that's that's pretty impressive so hope you like it and uh i'm definitely a lot more impressed with it now i didn't quite understand the semi um freestanding but now we see how it works and it, it probably really isn't that big a deal really um but you, you you definitely have problems if it was like a rock surface just like any any tent that relies on any kind of staking um, but if it's any kind of soil, you've got it made. So, all right, hope to see you out on the trail. Bye now.